Hey everyone, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode deals with discouragement or depression when you're practicing and how to overcome those, um, some different tips and strategies. I am working on this beast right now, Rachmaninoff Third Concerto, and um, I played the first and third movement as a teenager, but that was like 15 years ago. Um, I'm almost 30, turned 30 this month, and I played the first movement when I was 14 and the second move, or the third movement when I was 15 or 16. I played them with little local orchestras. I think that stuff's on Spotify and Apple Music and it's on my debut CD. And if you listen to it, I'm very, very young. The tempos are much slower than what I can play now. But having that much time pass, um, it's like relearning the concerto. There's a little bit of familiarity throughout, and I've obviously listened to it a lot over the years, but it's basically like learning the concerto new. I'm performing it at the end of January with a symphony down in St. George, Utah, and um, it has been quite the journey. I learned it uh, in about a month. I relearned the whole thing in about a month. And then it took me, um, started kind of polishing a little bit for another month and mostly memorized the first movement. But I was trying to memorize the second movement and it just was going so slow. So the first thing that I like to do when I'm discouraged or depressed is I like to make a reasonable and manageable plan. So November 1st came, I was on a family trip from October 23rd to 30th. So. Uh, I said, okay, in November, I will memorize the second and the third movement. I have to only memorize one page a day of the third movement, and I only have to memorize like a half page a day of the second movement, because the second movement's about 12 pages, third movement's about 32 pages in this edition. Okay, so um, that already gave me hope. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm an experienced enough pianist, I can memorize a page and a half a day. Usually in a day I can memorize between five to ten pages if, if it's like Chopin or something like that. But uh, with Rachmaninoff, the thickness of the chromaticism and some of the bigger chordal sections. Another instance uh, that was difficult is I hadn't mem I have never learned the Osea uh, cadenza that goes, you know... <laughs> I have just been memorizing that over the last five or six days and I just said I'm really only going to do a line a day if I have momentum build up I might do two or three lines and already in about five days the whole cadenza is just about memorized I think I have four bars left um, so it's going a lot quicker than I had planned there are moments in both the second and third movement that I know are going to be difficult like the chordal build up towards the climax of the second movement that is so thick it's so difficult um, and there's a couple technical spots in the third movement that are giving me trouble, but when you make a plan that's totally manageable, it's easy to meet that goal and to actually exceed that. So like I started memorizing this on November 1st, I think it's November 9th right now, and already I'm about 16 or 17 pages into the memorizing of the third movement. I'm about seven or eight pages into the uh, second movement, I only have a few pages left. So setting manageable and reasonable goals is one of the biggest things. The other thing that I like to do, and this is so critical, and this should actually be a different video, but we're gonna tie it in to give you guys extra um, material today since I haven't posted in a few weeks. When something is just giving you so much trouble, like the beginning of this second movement was such a nightmare to memorize. <laughs> start feeling discouraged, I stop worrying about memorizing. I stop worrying about getting it fast. I stop worrying about all these things and I reconnect with the main purpose of why I'm studying music in the first place, which is to escape the present and to live in an alternate reality full of passions and experiences that I may not be experiencing at this point, um, in, at this present moment in my life. I'm not saying I'm depressed or anything. I'm just saying when you get depressed, escape using this so this is such a weird thick passage but let's just go through this and feel each movement this might sound a little weird to you but this type of thinking really has helped my students a lot too
then just, oh my gosh, just enjoy this beauty. you start practicing like that many things start happening first of all you usually end up relaxing more so you can play faster and with more ease you end up listening to your sound so carefully that things start shaping more and then additionally the third thing that happens is you start memorizing it because you love it so much and you just couldn't live without this sound you know that just it starts to become like a loved one you become so intimate with this music and and so um, it becomes so ingrained into you it's like a family member almost and this sounds very strange and I understand if someone's not a musician listening to this video they're like my gosh this guy must be like high on drugs or something because he is sounding like a crazy person but I promise you if you are a musician and studying uh, music stop trying to figure out the technique as the first thing you do. Yes, you can drill things. You can do hands low and hands together, slow to fast with metronome, rhythms, different touches. All of those things are necessary to get the music where it is, but if you're struggling with um, you know, discouragement or depression or kind of stalling in your progress by any means, reconnect back with what music is. It is a series of sounds projected onto a timeline that means something. And that's what I want you to think. What does this music mean to you? How do you um, connect to it uniquely? What, what is your voice going to say that no one has ever said before? And you might think, well, I'm nobody. I'm not going to you know, say anything unique. But each person is unique. I've had people come up to me and say, such and such piece, that was the best rendering I've ever heard of that piece in my life. What did you do differently? And I'm just like, that's just what it means to me. And I'm thinking in my mind the whole time, yeah, right, mine's not even close to the best. I'm, you know, someone else's rendition is better. But we all touch people, um, you know, emotionally in a unique way with our music. So if you are dis discouraged or struggling in any way, get back to that core, fundamental, organic connection to the music. Start listening more to the sound connections and how the harmonies connect. To get back to how the composer is moving in and out of different uh, harmonies and are they using chromaticism? Are they, what chords are they using to deceive the audience? What chords are they using to um, bolden the phrase or make the phrase all of a sudden melt? So like... listening like that music stops becoming stressful and a task and it starts to become a joy and just a pleasure to experience so I know I've kind of given you a bunch of random thoughts today but I hope this has helped um, to give you a little bit of inspiration if you are struggling uh, if you wouldn't mind liking or commenting on this video it helps spread the message to more people also you're going to see uh, my website come up here at the top of the screen. You'll see a subscribe button down here if you don't mind subscribing to my channel and more videos over here. Also, our Christmas CD just came out. We're so excited about that. If you want to check that out, I'll also put a link in the comments section below. Thanks for joining me today. Good luck in your practice sessions.